Hi there, I'm Sarah Cunnington and welcome to Drawn from the Word. Today I'll be reading a scripture that some people may take exception to because it touches on politics. For some reason, politics seem to be a recurring theme in my recent meditations. But I'd encourage you to keep listening, because it's not about party politics. It's about the politics of the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the king as supreme or to the governors, as to those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do good. 1 Peter 2, 13 to 14. These verses mark the start of Peter's teaching on submission. And he starts with politics. Oops, didn't someone say that you don't talk about politics in church? Remember, this is the Peter who continued to preach the resurrected Christ even after being forbidden to do so by the Sanhedrin even after being flogged. It's the same Peter who was told by Jesus to render to Caesar that which was Caesar's. Yet he would be crucified by the Romans, just as Jesus foretold. And it's the same Peter who told his fellow Christians and us to submit to our leaders. That will make a lot of us uncomfortable. Here in the so-called first world countries, we may not face literal crucifixion as Peter did, but things are changing fast. New political movements are sweeping away traditional beliefs. Individuals are losing their jobs, even being imprisoned if they or we dare to state that God created men and women as biological men and biological women. If they or we dare to state that God instituted marriage between a man and a woman and that all other sexual relationships are ungodly and sinful. Or if they or we state that the life of an unborn child is precious and not to be torn from its mother's womb and tossed away. In France, a law is being considered which would oblige anyone seeking citizenship to declare that their loyalty to the Republic takes precedence over any god or religion, over God himself. Hmm. I wonder how that will affect me when I need to renew my residence permit in a few years' time. How do we submit to laws such as these? Peter's argument continues in verses 16 and 17. That we are to live as free people, but not to use our freedom as a cover-up for evil. We are to live as God's slaves. We're to show proper respect to everyone, to love the family of believers, to fear God and honour the emperor. In that case, to honour the president, to honour the king, to honour the prime minister. Whatever the state of the state in which we live, Whether we are free to worship or constrained by a political system that is contrary to all we hold dear, God still 
calls us, as Christians, to submit to every authority instituted among men. And yet, our God is over and above all human leaders. It is him we must fear more than we fear men, and his laws we must obey, even though it might cost us. In North Korea, children are encouraged to report their own parents if they are Christians. Imagine being unable to share your faith with your own child. I have friends who were called by God to smuggle Bibles into a communist country at a time when Christianity was banned. They had an extraordinary testimony of God's guiding and protecting them on their journey across Europe and also within that country. There were instances of armed guards searching their caravan, yet failing to see the Bibles in front of their noses. The Holy Spirit eventually guided them to a town where there was an underground church. And quite unknowingly, they parked their car and caravan right outside its front door. Organisations like Open Doors can testify to similar miracles, some even more dramatic. However, if we are to take a stand for the Lord or take a stand against injustice, we must do so for love of the oppressed, not hatred of the oppressor. Where to be a part of the solution and not a part of the problem. Romans 12.21 tells us where to overcome evil with good. Christians were at the forefront of the struggle for prison reform in the 18th century and the abolition of slavery in the 19th century. Many Christians hid Jews during the Second World War. They disobeyed the law at the risk of their own lives. If, like them, we are going to take a stand, I believe it should always be to save life rather than take it. Are there exceptions? My father made a choice at the start of World War II. He decided that the evil of Nazism was greater than that of taking up arms to fight. In contrast, my father-in-law chose not to bear arms. Instead, he became a firefighter. One day, all of us, without exception, will stand before God and be judged. In the meantime, we are to do good to all men, even to those whose politics we loathe. It is said that nations get the leaders they deserve. It's also said that if we want better leaders, we must pray for the ones we've got. So let's get serious and pray. Thank you for listening. I hope you'll join me again next Friday. In the meantime, be blessed. Bye-bye.